So, Karen, if you could uh, please introduce yourself and, of course, um, please tell us about what you're doing uh, those days. Sure. So, um, I'm a social worker. I have a PhD in social work. And I'm also a couples and family therapist. And during the regular life we had before, what I do is I uh, direct a family and couples therapy trauma clinic. Uh, I work mostly with victims of childhood sexual abuse, which is pe which means that these are people who've had really difficult lives, very difficult traumatic experiences, and working with those kind of populations brought me to study EMDR. I don't know if you're familiar with EMDR. EMDR is actually um, the psychotherapy that is recommended by the World Health Organization for first-line treatment of post-traumatic stress disorder. So a lot of people will go for a psychologist for talk therapy, but we know that the trauma is really ingrained in the body and in the emotions. So we're really trying to get it out there to go for EMDR therapy. And I'm an EMDR trainer, which means I train people to, to give EMDR therapy. Um, and the first Sunday after the Black Saturday, and what we did is we opened up uh, an, a WhatsApp group and we said, hey, we're EMDR therapists. We'd like to help. If anyone was at the Nova party, then we're here. We're going to give a Zoom group tonight. And within like, I don't know, minutes, we had hundreds of people in the WhatsApp group and then 750 people, which is about a fourth of the people that were there um signed up to get help from these zoom online emdr groups and i'll just say what we did in those groups is we we connected people back to their bodies we gave them tools from the trauma therapy field to connect and to be in the room and to help the activation that was like in their nervous system to start settling down and we gently touched a part of the traumatic aspect and we have a special way of doing it in the Zoom group so that, you know, people use the chat instead of saying like difficult things out loud and then having the other people having to hear that and really connecting people to the resources. But so many people reached out to us and there were so many needs um, that we just started developing um, facilities, organizations, personnel. It's not enough to deal with such massive trauma. So many people murdered witnessed um very difficult things and so we all sort of stepped in as professionals volunteering our time so there are the, the zoom groups that we started with and after that we started um we asked therapists to volunteer and they all signed up over 400 therapists some of them doing these online groups which also became groups for parents and uh, spouses of uh, soldiers worried about you know just yesterday 11 soldiers were killed um you know these are young boys i myself have three boys in the army one of whom i know is in gaza today and my other son is up north in lebanon and another son who's um also um in in the west bank and uh, it's very difficult for people and a lot of like, you know, somatic symptoms, not sleeping, not eating, difficulty concentrating, crying, and really helping people, every person, whatever they need. You know, some people are being attacked by the, by the sights of that Saturday. Other people are worried about the future. You know, people's homes were burned, whole communities. I have a patient whose whole street was murdered. So these feelings of guilt are one survivor from the Nova party said to me, I'm like, why me? Why did I survive? I mean, other people had it so bad and, and I'm feeling bad. I shouldn't feel like this. And why did I survive? And all of these questions that we don't really have answers to them. You know, I can just say to someone like that. I'm like, I don't know. But, you know, I hope that in 10 years time, when you look back at this time, then you'll know to say why you survived and what significant things you did with your life. תודה רבה לך. בעקבות כל הזוועות שחווינו ואנחנו ממשיכים לחוות, זה 
מטבע האדם הגיוני שזה יתפתח להיות שנאה נוספת ושזה יגדל, שזה לא יקרב לשלום, שזה בעצם רק ירחיק בינינו ו- ויפתח שנאה שהיא הרבה יותר עמוקה בכמה וכמה דורות. מה את כרגע רואה לנכון כהצורך החשוב ביותר שלנו בתור חברה כדי לעבור את הטראומה המדינית הזאת שאנחנו חווים מעבר לזוועות אלא איך להתגבר על השנאה שזה בעצם ה... Right, so we're seeing people with a lot of rage and wanting revenge um, and anger. Uh, I think a lot of it has to do with education. I think hate, you know, it develops out of what you hear, the stories that you're told about the other. I can say about, for instance, one of my sons was sharing, he said to me, mom, you know, it was very difficult because they were guarding um, Hamas terrorists that had been taken alive. And, you know, even terrorists, they're people and they're scared and they're looking at the soldiers and they're looking for connection and they're looking to speak. And my son said to me, you know, mom, it was really difficult because you brought us up on, um, on values of how to treat people and, 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 and Arab people. He was torn between having to, you know, guard these people who murdered people and babies and, and stay humane. And what I said to him as my son is I said to him, you know, First of all, you have to do what has to be done in terms of keeping order, but also how do you keep yourself humane? And this is something that I speak to my sons who are in the army about. And I think it has to do with the educational system. And once we start healing, um, a lot of people, including mostly people who live on the border, they are all uh, people who are for peace. I think a lot of people are trying to refigure out what they think about that piece and how is it even possible but i think it has to do with validating people's very strong emotions you know the, the hate the anger that they make sense because really brutal things were done to innocent people but also understanding that um that hate is not something you want to live with and what do you want to do so for me for instance um instead of feeling only that fear and hate and the end of the world what i decided to do is go out there and do something good so i think the education that we'll be continuing to give to our children and the goodness of heart that we will continue to show as a nation, I hope those will be helpful in turning the tides. But it is hard. I don't know. We, I don't know if I have hope. How is this going to be? You know, how is this going to work? I have a son in Gaza now. I can't fathom anything happening to him. very hard a lot of contradictory feelings i think we try to hold the yin and the yang you know the dialectic there's good and there's evil there's hate and there's love and we're gonna have to try to figure it out it'll take i think many years and i'm hoping that the more people get um good mental health and treatments like we're trying to provide that more positive, adaptive solutions will come to light for them. Last question. Yeah, please give the Japanese audience. What should we do for the Israeli? Um, pray. I don't know who you pray to. Um, That may you pray for us and for all of the world that this does not develop into something more horrific. Um, hold in your heart that what you see in the news is not always the truth and that the truth is sometimes very tricky. And perhaps have faith in the Jewish people that they are people of kind hearts And that we will be working um, to help people 
in our own country and to and through that make this world a better place and i hope that wherever you are you know i believe in the synergy of all life so to help the people of israel is probably to do more good yourselves with your family with your neighbors because we need a lot of good in these times and i thank you for taking the time um, to listen to my story, to our story.